we're back in the garage. So we got this uh, heat pump that's not heating. Uh, I know it's, you're probably saying, well, why is this? There is a gas furnace. Well, the gas furnace is the backup heat. <laughs> I would have just put in a furnace and put a straight air, air conditioner in, but all right. So we're gonna go ahead and start uh, with the easy stuff. The gas furnace is working. Heat pump's not coming on. They said it froze up too when it was cold. I'm gonna check the filter first and we'll go from there. So here we go. <laughs> so it's one of these darn inverted systems I hate these things they're so unnecessary uh, they're just super over complicated well anyway I'm gonna stop complaining but we're calling for cooling right now and it's not doing anything it's been making some weird noises I don't know what's up with that but uh, yeah so we're gonna go ahead and open this up and see what's going on so all right so we got an e6 error code and there's like a big nasty bug bug right there so Let's see what E6 is. E6, DC fan motor fault. That totally makes sense because they were saying that um, it was turning, it was it was freezing, so it wasn't defrosting. That's a possibility. Um, so let's go ahead and test that. So we're gonna go ahead and kill the power to this bad boy, and then uh, we'll go from there. We're gonna kill the high voltage. But uh, before any of that, let's uh, see if we're, we're gonna just verify that we're actually getting a call and then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, we're definitely getting a call. So it's locking itself out. Um, so this right here, this is the connection point for our DC fan motor. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna try to reset this thing, see if we can get it to go, but it's looking like we're gonna have to change the uh, outdoor fan motor. So just, just so you know, um, when you're dealing with these inverter systems, Give it a good minute once you unplug it because it, it, it's got capacitors in it, so it'll stay powered on for a while. Like it took it took about 45 seconds before all the lights shut off. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and check this motor. So it looks like it's a three phase DC motor. So this thing right here is supposed to come off first, okay, because that's the lock. And then you push this down and then pull it out. Just like that. All right, so we. We checked this one just like we would a three-phase motor, um, so I'm going to ground. So I'm doing the black wire to ground. I got nothing. White to ground. Nothing. Red to ground. Nothing. So it's not grounded. All right. So we're gonna do red to black. Now these should all test out at the same. So we got 31.65 ish. All right, so red to uh, uh, white, about the same. Okay, now we need to do white to black. Gosh, it's so hard doing this one-handed. Right. Okay, white to black. And yeah, they're all about the same. So windings are probably fine. Maybe it's binded. So we'll see if we can spin it. All right, so here's my special spinning tool. So yeah, it feels this smooth. So yeah, maybe the motor just failed. So, uh, another thing it could have been is it could have, uh, you know, iced up and it tried to spin and it detected it and cut itself off. That's a possibility. Uh, and then it's just been locked out ever since. So we now that we've got this all reset, uh, we'll put it all back together and then we'll try again and see if it see if it'll work this time all right so I restored power it's saying 44 43 that might I think that's the ambient temperature I'm not sure so I'm getting 42 but that's on the phone so all right so we're on DC voltage now uh, I just want to see if I'm getting any kind of voltage to that uh, Oh no, I got an E6. Okay, so I have the fan unplugged. I want to see if I'm getting a call, if I'm getting any kind of voltage from this. So it hasn't given me an error code yet. I don't know if it's going to detect the fact that it's open, but it might. I'm just worried that there might be an issue with the board, not the actual motor. So that's the one thing that's, yeah, say I'm getting an E6. That's probably because it's unplugged. 
And I never once saw voltage going to this. So I'm gonna have to go with that. We either there's a problem with the board or the actual motor. So we'll probably start with the motor and then go from there. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to check to see if this is possibly um, under warranty because it looks pretty new. So we're back on this one. We got all of our parts. This is, um, I ended up getting the motor and the board since under warranty just to be safe. But the new board's attached to the whole panel. So the whole back panel has to come out. So we're gonna disassemble this thing get the motor installed because I got to take this off first then I got to get this whole panel off and then reinstall it so here we go all right got the lid taken off um, we're gonna go ahead and start removing this whole panel so I got to take the, uh, the whip off and all that stuff and then uh, this entire thing just comes off and then the, the new board actually has a new panel the whole thing just puts on. I guess they don't want you messing with the heat sink. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that. Looks like it's gonna be a lot of wires to be plugging in and unplugging, so good times. We'll start with uh, getting this all disconnected. So I got these here. Um, these are also available on my store if you're interested, but uh, these are designed specifically to take these off. It's just a nice thing to have. I just picked them up one day. Oh, man. I just got tired of having to use my screwdriver. So basically what you do is you just go like that. And then it just kind of hooks on. Like that, see? Nice little wrench. And you can use it to tighten it too. So it's a set of three. There's a one inch, a half inch, and a three quarter, I believe. Uh, the one I just used is a three quarter, I believe. Yeah, three quarter. All right, so we've got all the thermostat wires disconnected. We've cut all the uh, zip ties off, so we're gonna start unplugging stuff. So I've made note of where everything goes, and I've made note of the ones that have nothing plugged in. That way I'm not like, hey, what goes in here? Um, so we'll start with the compressor. Pretty straightforward, and this one's all labeled, so that's kind of nice. <laughs> See, V, uh, WV, and U, I guess, and that's right there on the board, so that's cool. Um, I recommend taking pictures of everything just to cover yourself. Um, I know I just did, <laughs> but uh, I'm also making note yellow to yellow. So they make these things pretty easy. They make them all color coded and make it where you can't plug in the wrong thing, which is a nice, nice touch. Uh, so we're going to take this screw out, this screw, there's another two on there. And then there's actually one under here, that one there. And supposedly this whole thing should just come right out. Okay, so we have to push that rubber around it with all the wires through there. Um, there was one extra screw down here. And then you have to take these screws off of here, off these side panels. And it just slides straight up. And then I also forgot to take that ground wire off of there, which is this guy here. So, uh, but yeah, you can see it's the whole panel that comes out. So yeah. All right, so we got her in place. So this part slides behind these, and then these hook behind this. Right there, that way it holds it in place. So we'll go ahead and put all our screws back on, and then we will start wiring this thing back up. Alrighty, so we got her all wired in. We plugged everything back in. We got the high voltage wired in. Uh, the only thing we need now is our outdoor fan. Um, that's why I haven't put a zip tie on this. I've also zip tied these again. Um, We'll put that in there because we're going to also put the uh, outdoor fan wire on that. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, change out that motor. So I went ahead and loosened this. And then this is a half inch nut, looks like. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so we'll loosen that. And then this nut goes clockwise. So there's four of these 5 16 screws all around. Um, and they're screwed into those top nuts, but it looks like you can just unscrew it without having to grab it on the bottom. So, so when you're taking the motor, take these top screws off. Otherwise, if you do what I did, you're going to snap the freaking screw. So apparently this is a known issue because I called the distributor and they're like, yeah, we can't order those bolts. We have the same problem. Um, we even snapped ours just using a screwdriver. 
So they said go to uh, they said go to Ace Hardware and they should have something. So we're on our way to Ace Hardware. Um, it's pretty ridiculous that it's snapped like that. So yeah, I snapped three out of the four. So I got one. So I brought it with me. Uh, so hopefully we can find something that works and we'll be good to go. Well, um, I found these. Uh, they're almost the same size. It's like a metric size, so the nuts that it, you know the original nuts don't quite fit on there, and they're slightly longer, but they will work. So, all right. So I'm trying to take this cap off the stamped side, and look at this. There's like Loctite in there. So even if I were to, I probably would have snapped it either way. Because look at I'm I'm holding this to take it off, and I don't know if you can see that but it's on there, it's like locked on. <laughs> I can actually see the screw twisting. Yeah, I can get it off. So it would have snapped either way. That's ridiculous. Come on, Bosch, if you're gonna do that, then uh, I think you need to include screws with the motor. All right, so we're gonna use the connect kit. And this is the ratchet 11 in one. I'm gonna pull off the 5 16. Okay. And then I'm gonna flip this over so I have my fill up, which will be used on the other side of this to keep it from spinning out. Okay. And then we're using this quarter inch bit because the uh, extension that comes with this connects too fat, so it won't fit. But this is nice and slim. And as you can see there. And then we'll just go ahead and put the ratchet on there. And there we go. So let's get this done. Alrighty. Oh, you know what? I think it's, yeah, that's why. It's backwards. All right, cool. All right, we'll go ahead and crank that down. put our lid back on. Alrighty, well, we got her all uh, all hooked up. See, these don't look so bad, right? And then I put washers on them too, just in case. And then there's washers on the other side with locking rings. Alright, so we got her plugged in, got her zip tied down, everything's clean. Uh, so now we gotta restore power to it and we have to program it. So this can be, I think, a one and a half to three ton. Um, so you have to tell it what tonnage you want, so yeah. All right, so we got her powered up. So SW6, that's how you set the capacity. So we have it set for a three ton. So off on is for three ton. And when you're installing this, it doesn't say this in the manual, which is dumb. It's actually on the panel. So you can see here, it was originally set for, we're looking at SW6. It was set for a 24,000 BTU, which is a two ton, and we need 36. So you can see our setting there, it's off on. So I have the inside furnace kicked on. Um, there's no call for anything. And we have power to this. They say you wanna give it an hour if it's below 70 degrees outside for the crankcase heater to go. Uh, it's been on for a while, I'm not gonna wait an hour. So we're gonna go ahead and kick on the heat and see what happens. All right, she's running, so that's a good sign. Okay, so we have no error code, so. We'll let her run for a while, and then we'll check indoor temperatures and make sure she's good. Alrighty, so, she's got a nice convenient thing here. So it's putting out about 90 degrees, so it seems to be working now. This is just an heat pump mode. So we'll check some other supplies just to be sure. Got about 70 degree returns. Alrighty, so she's back up and running. Everything's working great. Uh, she's heating about 21 degree split uh, or rise, whatever you want to call it, delta T. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's how you change the board on one of those and the um, outdoor fan motor. And uh, yeah, apparently it's it's a major issue um, because the parts house was telling me that they have had a lot of people breaking those, um, breaking those, um, what do you call it, those uh, bolts because uh, they're pretty brittle and as you saw when I was trying to remove the the head you could see the whole thing bending so if, even if I used a screwdriver it would have snapped 
So, you know, Ace Hardware came to the rescue, thankfully. Uh, but uh, yeah, so everything turned out great. So anyway, uh, if you come across this, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools I use, make sure you visit my Amazon store. Thanks for watching.